morning, students. My name is Mrs. Ogali Agmoye, and I'll be taking you on computer studies. Today's lesson, we shall be looking at the topic, types of computer. The objectives to be achieved at the end of the lesson are 1. Define computer. 2. State the types of computer. 3. Give examples of each type of computer. 4. Classify the computers according to the groups. In our previous lesson, we have looked at the topic data processing. And we define data processing as the conversion of data to meaningful information. And a tool for processing data is the computer. So what then is a computer? A computer is an electronic device that accepts data as input, processes data, and brings out information as output, which can be stored for future use. Our input is the data which we send into the computer. When the computer receives the data, it goes ahead to process it before the result will be displayed for you to see. And the result can be stored for future use. The computers can be classified into the following categories. One, classification by type or signal. Two, classification by size. Three, classification by purpose. Four, classification by generation. We shall look at each of these classification one after the other. Classification by type or signal. This has to do with how the data received by the computer is being processed. There are three types of computer, namely one, analog computers, two, digital computers, three, hybrid computers. Analog computers. These are computers that measure physical quantities in continuous variables such as temperature, pressure, rate of flow, etc. They are used in scientific engineering work and process control. What we are saying here is that our computer works or process data in a continuous form until it gets to where it has to stop. An example of an analog computer is the car speedometer, where the rate of revolution is converted into numerical approximation of speed. For instance, when a driver is driving a vehicle, if you look at the speedometer, you will observe that as the driver accelerates the vehicle, the speedometer starts reading from zero and it increases continuously until the driver stops or slow down. If the driver stops, you see that the speedometer will move back to zero. Or if he maintains a speed, the driver will be at that speed, maybe 100 km per hour or 120 km per hour. So you see that the reading starts from zero and continues to where the driver maintains the speed. Other examples of analog computer are the work clock and the mercury thermometer. In our homes, we have work clock. And if you look at the reading of the work clock, you observe that the second hand moves continuously round the work clock by counting 60 seconds 
and the minute hand moves to the next minute. So you also notice that it goes round continuously. For the mercury thermometer, you notice that there is a silver substance at the lower part of the mercury thermometer. And that substance increases with temperature. So if you put the mercury thermometer under the hand of a patient, you notice that the mercury substance move from his um, spot, which is the damp part of the mercury, and starts reading upwards until it gets to the highest temperature of the patient. So in that case, the reading is continuous until it gets to the highest temperature. So our analog computer reads our values in continuous variable. Digital computers. These are computers that measure in discrete values by counting numbers. And the numbers are expressed in binary numbers, which are zeros and one. The computer understands only binary numbers and we call it machine language. So whatever that is sent into the computer, the computer will first of all convert it to binary numbers before processing. So your computer works by counting, the digital computer works by counting your values, by counting it one at a time using our zeros and one. It can perform mathematical calculations, organize and analyze data, control industrial processes, and simulate dynamic systems. Digital computers are used in scientific and business purposes because of its high speed of operation and accuracy. Examples of digital computers are the digital clock or watch, the calculators, laptops, microcomputers, it is. If you observe the digital clock, you will see two dots that blinks at its counts. So as it is counting, it blinks, showing that it is counting. And when it counts 60 seconds, you observe that the minutes will increase. So our digital computer works by counting. So also our laptop and our desktop works by counting in binary. Hybrid computers. These are computers that combine both the analog and digital computers to process data. Earlier we told you that the analog computers processes data by continuous variable, while the digital analyzes data or processes data by counting values. So when your hybrid computer was, it combines these two types of computer to process your data. The hybrid computer is a computer that accepts the analog signal and then converts it to digital signal. They are designed for specific tasks. Example of the hybrid computer is the foil dispenser machine, the device used to check the heartbeat of a patient, the device used to check the blood pressure of a patient. The foil dispenser in a foil station when dispensing fuel into the car or a container, you will notice that 
the readings are displayed on the machine. That is the digital aspect showing you the amount of foil that has been dispensed while the foil goes into your car in a continuous manner your machine counts it digitally showing the amount of foil that is dispensed into the car the heartbeat monitor is used to note the rate of heartbeat of a patient when connected or placed on a patient the heart beat will be displayed on the computer showing you the rate of the heartbeat of the patient also the device that is used to check the blood pressure of a patient when placed on the hand it takes the rate of the flow of a blood pressure sends it into the machine and the result will be displayed on the screen of the device for you to see the blood pressure of the patient that is the hybrid computer which combines both the analog reading that is by taking the pressure of the patient the blood pressure of the patient and converting it to digital form for you to be able to see it and read the blood pressure of the patient classification by size there are four classification by size one supercomputer two mainframe computer three mini computer four microcomputer supercomputer these are the largest fastest most powerful and most expensive computers they are used mostly for scientific applications that are mathematically intensive the computers can be accessed by many individuals at the same time the speed of the supercomputer is measured in nanoseconds that is it processes 1 billion data in a second so you can see how fast the supercomputer is so fast in processing most times it is used for artificial intelligence which is the fifth generation types of computer we'll go into that as we progress so our supercomputer are very powerful they are very fast and so many people can use the computer at the same time without interfering or slowing the speed of the computer the supercomputers are used for weather forecasting seismic analysis aerospace and automotive industries they are also used in research centers mainframe computers they are powerful computers fast in processing data and large in size it contains several microprocessors a single mainframe computer can be used by hundreds of people at the same time they are used in large companies government banks etc so you can see that the mainframe computer is similar to supercomputers but they are smaller in size less powerful than the supercomputer also so many people can use the mainframe computer at the same time in an organization workers or staff of the organization can access different files different documents at the same time using the mainframe computer mini computers they are smaller than mainframe computers they are also fast and powerful computers 
they are more than a microcomputer. They are mainly used as small or mid-range servers operating business and scientific applications. So in other words, our mini computers are smaller than our mainframe computer. Though so many people can use the mini computer at the same time. In most cases, the mini computers are used as servers where several computers are connected to it. For example, in a school where you have so many computers, maybe 50 computers, these computers are connected to this mini computer which is used as a server to be able to receive or retrieve information from the server. So, so many people can access information from the mini computers when they are network and your mini computer serve as your server in the network. Microcomputers. These are the most common computers. It requires one person or user at a time to use it. It is the smallest computer that contains a microprocessor as its central processing unit. It is less expensive than other sizes of computer. The microcomputer includes a microprocessor, memory, input and output unit circuitry mounted on a single circuit board called the motherboard. So our microcomputer is found everywhere at home, in schools, churches, banks, many places you can find our microcomputer because they are cheaper to purchase, they are small in size, in other words you can move them from one place to another. For example, your smartphone, you can take your smartphone to wherever you are going to, you can place it in your pocket and you move about with your smartphone. So our microcomputer is the smallest among the classification of computer by size. So examples of microcomputers are laptop, notebook computer, desktop computer, your personal digital assistant, which is your PDA, your smartphone. These are examples of your microcomputers. Classification by purpose. There are two classifications by purpose. One, the general purpose computer. Two, the special purpose computer. General purpose computer. These are computers used for various operations like performing calculations, playing games, watching videos, research work, typing, etc. These computers perform these operations by using different software. For instance, you have your phone at home. Many people use their phone to make and receive call. They can also use it to browse on the internet. You see that you have different functions which you use your phone to do. You can send SMS and you can also use your smartphone to send email depending on the type of smartphone that you have. So your general purpose computer is that type of computer that can do so many operations and these operations can be done based on the software that is installed in the computer. Examples of the general purpose computer are your laptop, your desktop computer, your notebook computer, your tablets, your smartphones. That is why you can have your 
laptop you can be watching video on your laptop at the same time you can be typing you can use your laptop to surf the internet to get information you can use it to do graphic design so so many operations can be done using our general purpose computer special purpose computers these are computers designed for performing a single or specific task a set of instructions are built into the computer for performing specific tasks in other words we are saying that a special purpose computer is made specifically for that which it is designed to do and such kind of computers are not found everywhere they are found in places where they are needed examples of these special purpose computer are your CT scan machine such computer is found in the hospital or medical laboratory they are also used for aerospace weather forecasting air traffic control for controlling the aircraft then satellite tracking these computers are for special tasks unlike the general purpose computer that you can use for so many operations or tasks classification by generation in our previous lesson we have looked at the generations of computer there are five generations of computer the first generation computer second generation computer third generation computer fourth generation computer and fifth generation computer and each of these generation of computer have their technology that was designed for them for instance the first generation computer the technology that was used is vacuum tube second generation computer used transistors third generation computer used integrated circuits fourth generation computer used large scale integrated circuits or microprocessor while our fifth generation computer use artificial intelligence now from what we have learned so far you discover that this classification of computers and the examples we have given may fall into any of the categories that we have listed and we have said that there are three types of computer the analog computer the digital computer and the hybrid computer if you look at the classification of computer by generation you notice that the fifth generation computer falls under the category of hybrid computer because it is a computer that can be used for converting analog to what digital also the fifth generation computer based on the use of artificial intelligence by size you see that our fifth generation computer can fall into the category of supercomputer because they can carry out special tasks under purpose the fifth generation computer can as well fall under 
the special purpose computer. Another example is our microcomputer. The microcomputer, if you look at the three types of computer, it falls under the digital computer. In some cases, you find that, that some microcomputers can also be used for as hybrid the way it processes data can also be hybrid computer. In summary, a computer is said to be an electronic device that processes data to give out results or output. The classifications of computer are by type or signal, by size, by purpose, and by generation. Assignment. One, define a computer. Two, mention three types of computers and give one example each. Three, state the four classes of computer. Four, give five examples of microcomputers. Five, mention five places where microcomputers can be used in the society. Thank you for listening.